How is it going? I hope everyone is doing well and thank you for tuning in this video. I am here with my second installment of my WCW NWO 1998 pay-per-view rewind with my review of Super Brawl 8 and without wasting any more time let's go ahead and jump right into the show with the opening contest which was for the WCW World Television Championship. Rick Martel defending against Booker T. Of course the winner of this match would go on to defend the championship against Saturn because originally it was supposed to be Booker T defending against Saturn but Rick Martel beat Booker T for the championship, and therefore they decided to do two matches, um, considering Martel won the championship, so that's what ended up happening here, but the match itself is uh, pretty on par, I thought, with their sold-out match, um, I thought it was pretty good, had some hiccups at the get-go, but um, as you know, as the match progressed, it started getting better, Booker T is mildly over, um, I thought he had a great performance here against Martel, and uh, you know, if this match is known for anything, this is the match that pretty much ended Rick Martel's career, um, I believe the injury that occurred is when, uh, or I believe when the injury occurred was when Booker T gave him a uh, hip toss into the ropes and the way he landed on his knee fucked it up completely and um, I believe he retired after this or shortly after uh, this could have been his final match I'm not 100% sure but I'm pretty positive this was his final match and uh, this match ended his career but they end up happening uh, they end up changing the finish because Martel was supposed to actually retain the championship but they had to change the finish on the fly uh, goes to the top goes for a drop kick but Booker ends up hitting him with the side uh that side kick ends up pinning Martel to win the championship. So Booker T is your brand new WCW World Television Champion. But immediately following Saturn, because at ringside, Raven and his flock were sitting watching the match. Saturn immediately rushes the ring and attacks Booker T. So instead of waiting later on for his championship match, that match is happening now. So Booker T versus Saturn, WCW World Television Championship. And this match was just boring. It was just Saturn uh, piss poorly working over Booker T because Saturn just absolutely sucked in my opinion. He really showed it here. He's very sloppy and just not good. Uh, Booker was trying his best to sell for Saturn. Uh, I thought Booker T looked good for the most part. You know, hands down for Booker T. Uh, even though this match wasn't the best, his performances, you know, over the course of both matches, I thought was very well done. Uh, his comeback was very good towards the end and uh, obviously ended up hitting um, Saturn with the Harlem Hangover. Get the, you know, to... Uh, pick up the pick up momentum. Uh, had his comeback. Ended up hitting a sidekick uh, on Saturn to the one for the one two three to retain the WWE World Television Championship. So not a good match. Didn't enjoy it, but I thought his match with Rook Martel was pretty good. Very good way to open the show. But then the match with Saturn, like I said, it was just Saturn working on Booker T. Very boring. Nothing really to watch at all. So just a great performance by Booker T. La Parca taking on Disco Inferno. Uh, why this had to be on the card, I don't know. The match itself, it started off entertaining. I will say that. La Parca was pretty entertaining with him mimicking La Disco Inferno. But then he just kept doing it over and over and over again. It got old very quickly. The match got very boring uh, to the point where it felt like it went on forever. Uh, so it wasn't a good match by any means. Uh, a steel chair got involved. Disco Inferno ended up wailing La Parca with it. And ended up pinning his uh, finisher. The chart buster, I believe it was called on the Parker for the win, so Disco gets the win, not much to talk about there, uh, JJ Dillon is interviewed by Mean Gene, he reinstates Nick Patrick as the referee, not for the main event though, um, just another segment, this is like 5-10 to 10 minutes, just killing time it seemed like, so, then we had a special bonus match, which they gladly included, Bill Goldberg taking on Brad Armstrong, which this was just a typical Goldberg squash. Brad Armstrong had some offense. Goldberg no sold it, destroyed him. Spear Jackhammer. That's the match. Nothing to it. Mass versus title for the WCW Cruiserweight Championship. Chris Jericho defending against Juventu Guerrera. Chris Jericho in 1998 in WCW was very entertaining. His character is very much coming of its own right here, and it's definitely where it's developing. Uh, you know, just from his pre-match promo to his post-match promo, I thought everything Jericho did here was tremendous. And I thought him and him and Humanitude had a really good match uh, for the championship. Uh, some great back-and-forth action, some great near falls. Jericho obviously worked on the mask with Guerrera. Guerrera had some nice uh, near falls in Jericho. At one point, actually, had a uh, tombstone followed by a 450, and actually got the pin. Uh, but Jericho's foot was on the rope, so the, of course the decision was reversed, and you know they had some good interactions back and forth. But Jericho ended up uh, reversing a Hurricanrana into the Lion Tamer, which forced Juventud Guerrero to submit. So really good stuff overall. Jericho winning was the right decision, especially afterwards. Jericho, after uh, you know flaunting wearing the mask for a good little while after this match, I definitely thought made it mean, mean even more. So that was a great part of Jericho, but. Yeah, of course, afterwards, they unmasked, and I just absolutely love Jericho ripping him apart in his promo, and then, of course, in commentary, again, the, the great line that, at least when he delivers pizzas now, people will know who he is. Absolutely love that line, and uh, yeah, just a really good match, uh, definitely one of the highlights of the show, if you ask me. 
The British Bulldog taking on Steve McMichael, Mongo. Um, just another Mongo match. You know, he had a decent showing I, for the most part, especially the Bulldog. Uh, Bulldog looked like he was just kind of trying to make McMichael look good. But, yeah, there wasn't much to it. Uh, Bulldog got the win with the arm bar, but uh, McMichael insisted that he didn't tap and yield to the referee. So they tried to protect him by having the referee call the match off for his best interest, even though he didn't quit. He made sure everyone knew he didn't quit. So I don't see how this match really benefited anyone. Just wasn't good by any means. And then we go to which I thought was match of the night for the WCW United States Heavyweight Championship. Diamond Dallas Page defending against Chris Benoit. Uh, Raven was, you know, doing a little backstage thing beforehand. Then being on, like, uh, commentary for the website uh, beforehand. And I thought this match was great. You know, Diamond Dallas Page definitely had a great uh, year in 1998. Especially when he was a U.S. champion at the beginning of it. And I thought him and Chris Benoit had an excellent match here. They were just beating the shit out of each other. The crowd was loving it. This crowd was very loud for this matchup. Especially when they would just beat the shit out of each other. And there'd be a knockdown spot. And the referee would do a, tease a double count out. Uh, just tremendous stuff overall between both men. And uh, absolutely some great stuff. Especially when DDP was going... Um, I forgot what movie he was going for, but he was going for a suplex, and Benoit perfectly countered into a crossface. The crowd absolutely erupted for that spot. Uh, just tremendous stuff from both men, and I absolutely loved the finish. You know, they're uh, exchanging counters, and uh, Benoit was going for a backslide after um, DDP attempted the diamond cutter. Benoit was, you know, transitioned or countered that into a backslide, but as he tried to do it, DDP flipped over right into a diamond cutter, hits it on Chris Benoit, one, two, three, DDP retains the U.S. Heavyweight Championship. Great match. Absolutely loved it. Like I said, match of the night. And uh, definitely was a great example of DDP's great year in 1998, if you ask me. Uh, rematch from Sold Out, but this time it's no disqualification. Macho Man Randy Savage taking on Lex Luger. Uh, pretty mat- Pretty much the match had the same formula as a Sold Out match, but it was just a, it was a notch better. It was slightly better than that match. Um, pretty much the ending just... Made absolutely no sense. So, of course, Luger gets Macho Man in the torture rack. Elizabeth rakes the eyes. Uh, NWO comes out. Referee rings for the bell. Uh, Savage and Luger fight out the NWO. But then Luger puts Savage back in the torture rack. And the referee rings for the bell again. So, I don't know. Luger wins. I don't know if they fucked up by ringing the bell early. Or if Luger won by DQ. And then Luger decided to put him in submission anyways. But the referee... I restart the match. I don't know. They never explained the fucking finish. It's so confusing when you watch it. Because, like, the referee rings for the bell. The bell's ringing. But then the referee calls for the bell again uh, for the second uh, torture act. So, I don't fucking know. It makes no sense. But that's WCW in a nutshell. Either way, Luger was the winner. Whether it was by DQ or submitting Savage, Luger got the victory. And it added more tension with Hogan and Savage. Because Hogan was kind of calling off the attack uh, when Luger and Savage were fighting, peop- uh, fighting everyone off. So, that was just to add more fuel to that fire. So, yeah, just typical WCW booking. Speaking of WCW booking, the WCW Unified World Tag Team Championship match, the Steiner Brothers defending against the Outsiders. Anyone notice the tag titles were called like six different things in 98? They were the Unified World Tag Team titles. They were the WCW World Tag Team titles. They were the NWO World uh, World Tag Team titles. They were the WCW Tag Team titles. They were just the World Tag Team titles. They had several different names for some reason in 1998, but... Uh, this match is just typical WCW booking. Uh, about a minute into the match, Scott Steiner finally turned on Rick Steiner. But <laughs> it's WCW. So, of course, in, in typical matches, when, you do, that, when you, have, you do the turn where the partner turns on their partner, that's the finish, right? The finish is always the guy turning on his partner and then, you know, the other team getting the victory. You know, they pick up the scraps and win. That didn't happen here. Scott Steiner, Rick Steiner pose. Uh, Steiner, Rick, uh, Scott Steiner, of course, uh, just whales. Uh, Rick puts him in the Steiner recliner, leaves him to die, but Rick Steiner isn't done. <laughs> he continues to wrestle the Outsiders for a good little while, uh, for a few more minutes, which makes absolutely no fucking sense. Why did you do the turn immediately and still have the match continue instead of having that just be the finish? Why didn't you just have St- Rick, uh, Scott turn on Rick at the end and then, uh, you know, Outsiders beat them? Makes no fucking sense, but again, it's WCW. You can't expect anything to make fucking sense with their booking, especially in this time period. But yeah, Scott turns on Rick, very beginning. Rick still fights back, he gets worked on. He gets the worst uh, Razor's Edge, I think. Well, not the worst, one of the worst Razor's Edge you'll see. Um, or Outsider's Edge, I guess you should call it in this in this case. Uh, from Scott Hall, one, two, three. Outsiders are your brand new WCW Unified World Tag Team Champions. 
fucking garbage shit here. And then we go to the vacant WCW World Championship, Sting, Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Sting rushes Hogan at the very beginning, and then Hogan just beats the shit out of him. Beats the shit out of him. Beats the shit out of him. Taunts in the, in the camera with Sting, and just works, and works, and works on Sting, which feels like a fucking eternity until Sting finally has his comeback. But it's shortly lived because Sting takes out Charles Robinson, the referee, uh, with a Stinger splash. Nick Patrick comes running down to take over. Because he's not supposed to referee this match, but since there is a bump, he comes out. Uh, he gets taken out. Uh, Sting and Hogan go at it. Uh, Sting ends up hitting Scorpion Death Drop on Hogan, uh, but the referees are both down. Uh, NWO comes out, Chaos, and then Savage in the whole mess of things. Clocks Hogan with the spray can because Hogan said fuck you early on, and then Savage decides to say fuck you too to Hogan. So double, he crosses Hogan, and. You know, Hogan jobs to not one Scorpion Death Drop, but a hit to the head by a foreign object because, you know, Hogan can't go down to one fucking move, brother. <sighs> so that happens. Sting drapes over Hogan, pins him. New WCW World Champ. Full good moment. One of the few feel good moments you got in WCW post NWO era, or during the NWO era. So it was a good moment. But shit match, shit main event, which is just WCW fashion, you know, anything, honestly, any match has to do with the original members of the NWO, obviously, you know, Hogan Nash and, uh, Hogan Nash and Hall, sorry, uh, any matches really that involved them in this time period just sucked anyways, so it's nothing really, it, you know, nothing to be surprised by, but it's just like, I don't know, it's surprising how little effort they put in and got away with, this just goes to show you why WCW didn't wasn't a success in the long run uh, in the long run but yeah uh that was a pretty uh shit main event to end what i thought for the most part was a solid show you know i thought it was a a mix of both i thought there was some good stuff i thought there was some bad stuff but uh for the most part i still thought it was an enjoyable show i thought it was a good pay-per-view overall you know it definitely wasn't as bad as super brawl the year before super brawl 7 um wasn't as good as sold out but you know what i would say it's just a little bit under that uh, not too far um, beneath it, but just, you know, a little bit beneath it. Uh, but for the most part, it's still a good show. I still had fun with it for the most part besides some of the bullshit booking. But, you know, as uh, in WWE fashion, the undercard, you know, the mid card, the cruiserweights, that's usually where the entertaining stuff's at, and they definitely were the best parts of the show. Like I said, especially the, the U.S. title match, it definitely was a match tonight if you ask me. But everything else, you know, was at least pretty much solid for the most part. There was some bad stuff, but... I do think, for the, for the most part, the show was enjoyable. So, that was my review for Super Brawl 7. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, please feel free to leave a like below. The series will be continuing, like I said previously, my sold-out review, if you tune into that. I'll be doing this review, um, pay-per-view rewind, throughout the entire month of May. So, uh, throughout the entire month, I'll be posting, uh, you know, sporadically of the pay-per-view events from 1988 up until May 31st, which, of course, will be my final review. But until then, like I said, sporadically throughout the month, I'll be posting my uh, pay-per-view uh, pay rewind for WCW 1998. So stay tuned for those videos. But once again, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like below. And of course, until next time, I'll see you guys later. Thank you guys for watching the video.